All right, y'all, it's the holiday season now, and what better way to get in the spirit of giving than becoming communist? Now, sure, there are many better countries to do this with, but I chose Cuba, and why? Well, this is a powerful and proud Caribbean island that has been abused by the Spanish for centuries, and we stand here as one of the last remaining crew members of the sinking ship known as the Spanish Empire. I want to pull off the glow up of the century, and we can turn this neglected and battered nation to become one of the greatest nations to bless this planet. And also, remember, if you enjoy this video and my other videos like this, subscribe to my channel. I think we can start the new year with 10,000 subs, and I know we can do this together. Anyways, looking at Cuba in the start, the law situation isn't that regressive. Of course, there's that elephant in the room we have to deal with, but otherwise, this is alright. We can reform our government to have nearly max legitimacy. Also, since we are only one state, we can use our decrees to stack a bunch of modifiers in our country. Right now, I just had to focus on getting more people in the country and building up the resources necessary to break away from this dead weight of a nation. Of course though, while we do that, we have to siphon as many people as we can from this market before we go. After a decade of building up, it was time to start making some progressive reforms. The first step was with healthcare. The church supporting me and by uh, sacrificing a few farmers, the law was passed. Soon afterwards, the abolitionist movement was growing larger and larger, and I decided to listen to them and push forward to ban slavery in Cuba. Now, the slave owners were panicking. They were losing in the marketplace of ideas. So, they just organized a coup against me and I was forced to kill the bill. I thought pushing forward wealth voting would weaken the clout held by the nobility, so I got to work on that. Managed to even get some of the landowners to join the intelligentsia while crafting legislation, and with that support, the law went through. And since I weakened them greatly, I thought I could try again to ban slavery in the country. This time, they were confused and didn't even know how to respond to it, asking me whether they could have their own private police force instead. Unsurprisingly, that demand did not catch on with many people, but as the bill got closer and closer to being passed, the landowners got their act together and forced me to kill the law once again. By 1856, I felt strong enough that I could, by myself, ask somebody else to fight for my independence. France was completely willing to do this for me, and Spain was very scared. But this couldn't be too easy for me, since Russia and later Germany joined the war against me. Fortunately though, when the war started, the French army was doing great on all fronts. Meanwhile, my attempts to expand the voter base were completely failing, so I decided the third time was the charm and tried to ban slavery. With everyone so focused on the war, nobody was able to stop me from finally getting this law through. I decided I had enough of just sitting around and letting France do all the work. I wanted Puerto Rico, and I was gonna take it by myself. The Cuban military planned an invasion of the island, and after six weeks of preparation, we just got slaughtered. Seeing as there was no way we could get that island if we didn't occupy it, I organized my army again for a new naval invasion. Hopefully, our general could use more men in the second invasion and learn from his failures. And he failed just as hard as the last time. For some reason though, after France wins a battle in Spain, the front lines just split up and the Spanish go from losing the front to blitzing through southern France. Forcing them to peace out and leave me by myself, but fortunately, I had just enough war score to be able to get my freedom. With my newfound independence, I thought I might as well join the British market and use that to build myself up, but France got pretty offended by that and asked me to join their market instead, bringing up the minor fact that I'm only independent because of them. At least people in the French market are still interested in moving into Cuba though. I had to keep this country moving forward, so I made sure even more people could vote in our elections. And to make sure people would continue to be interested in coming here, I made it illegal to make fun of the French. Now, I knew people wouldn't be happy with this change, so to satisfy them, I did give them the right to freely protest against it. As we're progressing, America was struggling with black separatists declaring independence in the South. 
I guess this caused an uproar in the American government because it became the first communist government in the world after this, but they didn't last very long. The new African government was immediately plagued with problems with the white southerners declaring independence from the new state and peasant uprisings consuming much of the country. With more people coming to Cuba, I had managed to become a minor power and I knew I could move quickly and take these newly formed and weak states in the American South. These were strange times producing even more strange alliances against me. However, with France backing me up, the CSA gave in and joined their new Cuban overlords. France then decided to call in that favor to be their new protectorate and I told them to shove it. I had more important things to focus on, like expanding, and I needed money so I took Panama to sell it later on. And next, I wanted to take over Florida, but since the Mexicans joined against me in the war, I decided I would just annex all of New Africa in the war. The New Africans didn't even have an army, and the Mexicans couldn't even be bothered to send troops to them, so all this land was just mine. Proud of our recent victory, we created a new national anthem for Cuba, and I feel like I'm being trolled by the game telling me that this is a cool national anthem. Speaking of trolling, I try to get the state of Haiti, and almost immediately when they can, the Chinese join against me. For some reason, the Emperor of China just cares a lot about this possible war between two small Caribbean islands. Luckily, I was able to call France into this war, and this brought enough power to the table to get the Haitians to back down. Then the moment I was waiting for finally arrived. Socialism was here in mainstream Cuban politics and I had to embrace it. Right after selling some land to France for a massive profit, of course. But after that, it was finally time to embrace socialism and become a council republic. Now, while this was happening, I did make a move for Costa Rica and the British tried to stop me, but the French were once again backing me up and Costa Rica gave up without a fight. And as I finished up liberating Haiti, the legislation passed formally making Cuba a communist nation. With that done, we adopted a more anarchist style of government to show our commitment to representing the workers and ridding our society of the capitalist class. Our success here even inspired a worker revolt in the United States, which we of course showed solidarity with. For some reason, people were leaving Cuba. And that was just because of a little unemployment. Now, these were probably the female workers I introduced into the workforce earlier, and they had the gall to leave Cuba after I gave them their freedom. Unemployment and emigration can be hard issues to solve in an economy like ours, but fortunately, there is a very easy solution. I really wanted to work with the communist Nicaraguans, but as you can see, they were under the influence of bourgeois liberals and needed to be properly integrated into the workers' revolution. The class traders tried their best to stop me, but the will of the workers is just unstoppable, and Nicaragua accepted the revolution into their hearts. While we were still at war with the UK, we realized the only way to keep the revolution safe was a strong vanguard party to keep our nation safe from subversive elements. We started a five-year plan to rapidly grow our economy, and we ended the war with the UK to continue the plan. As I assumed direct control over our economy, some people, class traders, immediately started planning a revolt to turn back the clock on the revolution. So we told them that, yeah, we're totally gonna reverse this policy. And when those people calmed down, we just stopped doing that. I mean, what we were doing was working. In two years, we finished our first five-year plan, and now I need to spread the revolution to more of Central America, like El Salvador, then Guatemala, and Honduras. I also wanted to attract more workers to these newly liberated lands, so I made it easier for the oppressed masses to come to Cuba. Unfortunately, despite our great progress, our government still remained very unpopular amongst the people. I needed to liberate the oil supply in Venezuela for the workers' use, of course, but apparently I was doing too well now and China needed to join once again to stop me. I thought maybe I could still quickly annex the state before the Chinese army arrived, so I continued with the war. 
but the Venezuelans had something I wasn't ready for. As my troops were landing on the beaches, they spawned a tactical civil war that completely invalidated my war, forcing me to pretty much white peace and struck me with a five-year truce. Next target for the revolution was Colombia, and this time, when I picked what nation would try to screw me over, I drew Germany. I did my best to prepare my military for the war, but my navy did not stand a chance against the Germans. The army, however, did hold the line in Panama, and I managed to do small-scale convoy raiding of the German army supplies to Colombia, and after a year of this, when I started the offensive in Colombia, I realized the entire German army there had already starved to death, and without their bourgeois protectors, the Colombians surrendered their land to us. However, the bourgeois mind control was very ingrained in Colombian society since the people there were clearly manipulated by foreign elements to revolt against us. The Austrian Empire revealed itself as the main supporter of this rebellion, but the rebels soon came to their senses and realized we were not their enemy and surrendered to us. The capitalists did everything they could to undermine us. When we saw the Mayan people suffering and trying to extend our hand to help them, the Russians jumped in to try to stop us, but fortunately, our armies were much faster than theirs, and we liberated the area. I wanted to take the fight to one of these bourgeois oppressors for once, and seeing that the UK was in a fight with France, I thought I could quickly move in and liberate some of their suppressed colonial workers. And when the war started, we quickly swept through, taking their poorly garrisoned colonies. We even managed to successfully naval invade the island of Jamaica. The pressure was clearly too much for the UK to handle, as their oppressive government collapsed into a civil war. But through some bourgeois magic, when a new government was established in the UK, all the land we occupied was just taken away from us, so I had to reinvade it all. But now that I was dealing with the full force of the British military, I just decided to quit while I was ahead and grab some of the lands that I wanted out of this war. Now I realized it was very hypocritical of me to criticize capitalist markets while also still being in one, so I decided it was time to leave the French market and make my own based on socialist values. Now, some may say this was a disastrous economic decision, but these people don't have principles. You see, within a year, we had cut down that deficit drastically, and in another six months, we were finally in the green again. Cuba had made great gains on the world stage, and could soon even call itself a world power if I played my cards right. Many people were coming to Cuba in search of opportunity and a better life. The Cuban government was all about helping those who were less fortunate, but they also had to demonstrate they were a force to be reckoned with and started the Dreadnought program. Unfortunately, despite all that has happened, the government was still unpopular with the people, and to try to make the people happier, the government passed a tax cut. Unfortunately, the people were still unhappy, and now they were making less money. I tried to boost the morale of the people by liberating the workers in Puerto Rico, but this war was more costly than expected. The first attempt to invade the island failed, but despite that, we were finally recognized as a great power in the world. And we did manage to finally take the island through some controversial means, but we got the job done. Now we may be almost bankrupt, have a very unstable government, and many of the people in the country despise us, but we did become a great power, so I would say this is a very successful attempt at true communism. Hope you guys did enjoy this video though, and again, if you did make it this far, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more cool videos like this. And hopefully, I'll see y'all next week, and y'all have a very Merry Christmas.